Hi there, I'm Sydney Sidwell. I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. I've been a debate coach for the past 12 years, and I'm here to just go through some basic debate stuff to help out the debate community, I hope. Uh, so if you are a brand new coach, I'm hoping this will help you. If you were a debater who maybe their coach got thrown into debate and they're an English teacher who is completely overwhelmed, hey, now you can coach yourself because I will be going through a uh, public forum debate, Lincoln-Douglas debate, a hint of policy. I can't say I'm an expert on policy. Uh, the individual speech events and Congress. So with that, I hope maybe you can become a better debater and can even coach yourself. So today what we're going to be talking about is argumentation. So as a debate coach, what I usually start the year with is basic argumentation. Everyone knows how to do it, whether they think they do or not, right? So in class, what I would usually do is put out some goofy debate topics uh, some topics that are like Batman is better than Superman, which all my debaters roll their eyes just because I use it as an example every year. But it's a great way to start, right? And everyone has an opinion like, ah, oh, Batman's better because he's human who has to like make him make his way through to be powerful and fight the bad guys. Or Superman obviously is the better superhero because he is tough and strong and like nothing can take him down except kryptonite. So what we do is I usually split the class up or I have them choose and then I have them write down all the different ways they think Batman is a better superhero and all the ways that they think Superman is a better superhero. And once I've given them a few minutes to do that, then we brainstorm the ideas with, and I, and I always say this when we start doing any brainstorming or sharing of ideas, is that no idea is stupid for real, just because we've had some stupid ideas that ended up being like really great arguments. So I say this has to be a safe place that people can throw out arguments and you're not supposed to immediately argue with them, okay? Because the argumentation comes later. And that's why I love debate is it gives everyone a chance to have their time that they stand up and speak. Because even though I'm a debate coach, I did debate in high school, um, I actually hate confrontation but I love debate for giving me that chance to do that. All right, so let's think about it for a minute. Is Batman a better superhero than Superman? So in brainstorming on the board, we would write down some ideas for each, and then we I would put numbers by those ideas uh, and make those the points. So I'm gonna kind of walk them through what is called a spar round. Now spar, S-P-A-R, is spontaneous argumentation. I don't know how to spell argumentation. We'll just go with that. And basically, do not bug me about my handwriting. I know it's not good, but hopefully I can still help you out. Hey, it's free advice, there you go. So spontaneous argumentation uh, is a great way to start debate because kids get really excited about the topics. Uh, they totally get it. They go, oh, I didn't think I could do debate. I didn't think I was smart enough, but I can do debate. This is really cool. So with sp what I do with spontaneous argumentation is that they are given a topic and in real life, this is actually at some tournaments, with SPAR, there is one minute prep time. So they have one minute to write a case. And then after that, the affirmative gets up and they give a three minute case while the negative is writing that down in a special thing that we call flow and I'll teach you flow later. Negative then gets up for three minutes and what they do in that three minutes is they attack the case and then they or actually they do their own case and then they attack the affirmatives case. At that point we have a three minute cross-examination, okay? In public forum, it's called crossfire. In policy and LD, it's usually called cross-examination. They're just sort of asking questions of each other, trying to take out each other's case. And by the way, I realized already, these are actually two minutes. I wanna be fair with you. So these are two minutes. 
Then a three minute cross examination. So for instance, if I was doing Batman versus Superman, uh, I would say, oh, can I have the first question? So uh, with Batman, if he was shot by a bullet uh, in the head, would he die, right? Well, Superman, if he's shot with the bullet, no big deal, right? So it just, just seems like he can save more people. And then Batman can say, okay, I have a question for you. Um, uh, is, is Superman real? Like, is he based on a real person? Would we want little kids to act like Superman? Something like that. Kind of go back and forth, taking apart each other's case during cross-examination. Now later, I will actually have lessons just on cross-examination, asking good questions, that sort of thing. But let's just get back to this part here. Okay, after the three minutes of cross-examination time, we have one minute for the affirmative. And what the affirmative does with that one minute is they attack the opponent's case and kind of go over why they should win the round. And those are called voters or voting issues. Again, I'll go through that a little more later. Negative then gets up, does one minute where they, ant they um, attack the affirmative's case one more time and then kind of go over why they should win the round, okay? So that's a fun thing to do with something uh, like Superman versus Batman or like Cheerios or Better Than Fruit Loops or there's a ton of great topics out there. Uh, the Loch Ness Monster is, is real or ghosts are real. Anyway, just Google it. You will find a bunch of really fun spar topics. So that's a fun way to start the year just because everybody loves, you know, arguing this sort of thing and you get your basic argumentation, okay? So during that one minute prep time, which I usually give my brand new kids like three minutes, and I have my varsities go over and help them write a case, and that would just be three points that they believe in, okay? So during that time period on a little piece of paper, right, they're gonna say one Superman is indestructible, and Batman is not. Second, my second point would be he can save more people. And third, he can fly. Which he can get everywhere and again save more people, something like that. Okay, so whatever their three points are, I kind of say focus on those three points. All right, so basically you get that argumentation. You, you have an argument. You attack the opponent's arguments, you come back with your own. So what makes good argumentation though? Argumentation that you're going to see in public forum, in Lincoln-Douglas debate, in policy, and even in Congress, right? So what makes good argumentation? All right, so let's go over that. A great argument has three parts. So let's go through those parts. The first part is the claim. Okay, a claim is what a lot of people do. Uh, they don't back themselves up. They're just saying it is what it is, right? Like, oh boy, I don't want to get political. I'm going to get myself in trouble. Uh, so let's go to let marijuana, okay? So should we legalize marijuana or not? People who say yes say marijuana isn't nearly as, you know, deadly as alcohol and cigarettes, okay? So that would be their claim. But why should we believe them? Okay, they're just a high school student or they're just a citizen of society, right? They didn't do the studies. There's no reason to believe a claim without the next thing, which is why the next thing is so important, okay? And that is the warrant. The warrant is also evidence, okay? So with evidence, obviously at this point, this is when you bring up great studies. This is when you bring up experts in the field and great quotes from experts in the field. Um, statistics are beautiful, right? When you're doing the goofy spar, it's hard to bring up the evidence, except by saying in this movie, you know, Superman stopped a nuclear weapon 
that was being shot at the United States. So that's your evidence, right? And that sort of thing, as long as we've seen the movie, we get it, yes, that happened. Um, but in real debate, in LD, in public forum and policy, dang, you better have evidence, right? And that evidence better have a, a great source of some kind. Why should we believe, you know, henrimansblog.com uh, if we don't know who this person is? Right, so when you use really good evidence that like is from Harvard or Yale or was done over a 10 year period or whatever, you, you're in good shape, right? And, and really most debates actually come down to the evidence part. Um, the last thing that you're gonna have when you have an argument, so that's the second thing, you can take notes and remember this forever. Uh, the third thing is the impact. Okay, the impact says why this is important and why it proves your topic true. I would say the majority, 90% of the time, people don't have impacts with their arguments. I mean, I, I've coached a lot, I've judged a lot, you know, and I see this all the time where people, people are like, let's say the marijuana. Marijuana, you know, is uh, less deadly than alcohol. Here's some evidence for that. Right? And if the topic was we should legalize marijuana um, and they don't go back to that with their impact and show that we could now save this many more lives if people went to marijuana instead of alcohol, then you haven't fully explored your argument. The impact is massive. And when, I, when my kids would write cases, I said, I actually want to see you write down impact at the end of each claim and evidence at the at the end, right? So in public forum and Lincoln Douglas debate, uh, you would usually have like three points or three contentions. Those would be your main areas of analysis. And with that, you would have a bunch of pieces of evidence. I would tell my public forum kids, have six pieces of evidence that you are summarizing, even though you keep the entire piece of evidence somewhere for people to look at, but like, really back yourself up and then go back to the topic. I can't tell you the number of kids that never come back to the topic. Uh, they're just saying marijuana is better than alcohol and marijuana will make money and marijuana, but they never like come back and say, and that is why we should legalize marijuana. It will save lives with the tax money. We can now improve education. Uh, we can decrease taxes on other things so people have more money to spend, which helps the economy overall. You can see where an impact then fully clarifies for the judge exactly how awesome your argument is. Does that make sense? I hope so, okay? Um, can't emphasize enough. Debateclash.com, uh, Mr. Nico on there, he actually did a great thing on impact calculus that I would highly recommend you watching after you've done like a few spar rounds and you fully want to explore impact calculus further, which is just like adding up the impacts and clarifying for the judge why you win the round, okay? All right, so that's your basics, claim, warrant, or evidence, and your impact. And with that, you're gonna have great argumentation. So let's just really quickly go through maybe like a Superman case or a, no, let's say Batman. Seems like most kids, by the way, seem to like Batman a lot better than Superman. I don't know why, but there you go, okay? All right, so let's do that. Uh, contention one, Batman is a real example for society, okay? Real example for society. And I am definitely going to be shortening things all the time as I write because you do that when you flow around, which is take notes on around. So with that, we have that, and then we want our evidence, right? So I can bring up, um, he uses brain to create inventions and his money goes to helping people. Uh, Superman, Superman is not real. No one has his powers, right? 
And in fact, bad example for children. Why is he a bad example for children? Well, for one thing, it's, it's not realistic. So if kids think that they want to be like Superman, they may go to the top of their house in their underwear and like a towel cape and jump off the house and might get hurt, right? Whereas with Batman, they can see that he has to create these things or he has to, you know, earn the money so that he can create these cool gadgets and things that he has. So that's why Superman is not the best example for children. So you can kind of see, there's my claim, there's my warrant or evidence, and now let's go to the impact. So if I was presenting this case, I would say impact, uh, uh, Batman is the better superhero because when we look at a superhero, we want someone who can be a good example for children. And Superman is not a good example for children. Whereas Batman shows that no matter what happens in your life, tragedy or whatever it is, you too can help society and Superman can't do that. That's what we want in a superhero, right? So you can see the impact kind of fleshes it all out, okay? And I'm gonna end up doing that with all three of my contentions. All right, so again, one more time, we have claim, warrant or evidence, and impact for argumentation, remember that, and next time we will go through even more, I'll talk about flowing and actually going through an entire round, okay? Thank you.